All right, folks, we're back, and with a great kickoff to this game, got to give a shout out to old Jimmy. Good old Jim boy. Just hit us up with a brand new subscription, so welcome to the family. You are now part of the Base Trade Brigade. Make sure to use all of our emotes. But we are getting into a brand new game, and oddly enough, neither of these Koreans wanted to swap to Korea. They're both kind of like, nah, we'll just play on Europe. Why not? I mean, I got some thoughts behind that. We'll discuss in a moment, though. So... Here we are in the European Corsair Cup, spawning in the top left side. It is going to be none other than the Blue Terran player, Keen. And in the bottom right, as the Red Terran, he is alive. Okay, so I can actually, I don't know for Keen, because Keen is really out there as far as a player. Like, I have no clue where he's at, what he's doing, etc. But, uh... Oh, how much was... I guess we should probably include how much was donated with the top donator thing. I didn't think about Good that. Rain. We should show how much of a baller. There we go. Sorry, that there was brought go. up in chat. Uh, anyways, I was going to say, though, Keen, I don't know where he's at in far as things, but Alive is actually on a pretty decent Kespa... Like, we'll say situation. Like, I don't want to say team, because that starts me talking this whole topic of, like, what are the good teams or the bad teams, but... The point of it is to play on Europe, it's not so noticeable. Your match history isn't there. Your friends list isn't there. There's no pure offline option on Battle.net. Like, Alive might not be supposed to play in these, but does? I don't know. Like, question marks start re-rising when you're like, why would two Korean players not want to play on the Korean server? I'm not trying to insinuate there's anything fishy. I'm just speculating, like, reasons. Like, the only things I can think of, like, why you would want lag. <laughs> I'm not sure. I know that Alive, I, I, I'm i pretty sure it was Alive, but it also could have been Keen. Okay, these guys face each other in a lot of tournaments. Last time they were like in a final in a Corsair Cup or something, uh, Matcherino maybe, I don't remember, they wanted to play on Korea. So it's not like they've always been okay with Europe. I, I just they don't care enough for a, a quarterfinal. <laughs> um, I'm really not sure. Or they're, or they're being especially lazy today. Yeah, it, it could just simply be like, I don't want to swap servers and then come back after when I win. But yo, yo alive, man, what are you up to? I was going to say, since I took away that region changer button, which I don't know why they did. Yeah, right? It, it was such a, a convenience. It was such a it convenience. It is a pain. But okay, hang on. This is cool. This actually, as much as I would love to like reference some other great Korean I'm actually going to say, this, this reminds me a lot of what Lily Kanin would do with in terms of proxy Stargates. Because I'm guessing, well, this could be a Liberator. I'm going to say a Medivac. And if you're going to Elevator Hellions up, this is a great way to do it. But at the same time, this could just be a Liberator paired up with a push that comes out. And it's like that 1-1-2 one, one, Reaper, whatever you want to call it, attack. And looks like that is going to be the case. It is really just weird to see this happen, though. You just you don't see this kind of proxy often. Yeah, I mean... It feels like it's becoming more popular, just because I think like Gumiho does it, and uh, of course Lily Kanin does it, but Lily Kanin has a lot of proxies. <laughs> um, but certainly Gumiho has done it, and I want to say Alive's done it before too. Alive's not nearly as tricky of, as Gumiho, and Gumiho's not nearly as tricky as Lily Kanin, and so on and so forth, but uh, they does have a couple of, of tricks up his sleeve. I, um, whereas Kino, like, I think, always plays a little more standard. This is a very thin line too, where I would just like differentiate tricky versus like crafty right like because some of these things are really clever when they do them but this is really just straight up gonna try and get some damage done distract over here the attack doesn't go so hot but the liberator sails onto the main and there's no anti-air zombie grub nothing yeah he got his own liberator that's moving across the map right now yeah no viking on deck no cyclone coming out just yet this liberator has nothing to stop from denying an entire base of mining he started the command center over here but it's gonna be a while till he gets back on it this screws keen's economy super hardcore he's long distance he mining to the natural and the SUVs are getting picked off one at a time but coming back oh no never mind I there's, a a cyclone. Cyclone. there's a cyclone yep. i think alive's got it he's good this could be game actually right here yeah in fact maybe Okay, Blue's Gears is okay. I was wondering if maybe oh, he should have pulled the SCDs, but he's alright. dead, right. though. Yeah, no, he's definitely won. Unless this attack can kill Alive, or getting to the main base to equalize the workers killed. That's gonna be it's hard. Cyclone's not a new. really good form of defense. And even then, brute force through those Reapers, just auto attacking in. Yeah, that's game. game. GG. It's. I don't think I've ever seen a proxy Liberator end the game. Believe it or not, not. Yeah, um, there's usually, if nothing else, the Cyclone gets made like out of paranoia yeah. for most Terran players, and if not the Cyclone, maybe at a Viking, or at least a Viking on the way. But because mm -hmm. he started that command center, he had no money to do anything with. Like, as you guys saw, when the Liberty came in, the factory just finished the tackle up. The Cyclone was too expensive to build. 
Yep. That was pretty perfectly timed. And just an unfortunate little... Not exactly like a... Don't order win or anything like that, but just a situation win. Uh, Keen chooses Frozen Temple next. Might be getting some revenge. Something a little bit sneaky as well. And I would, I would put Keen, as far as all the Terrans that we see, on a weekly basis. You know, Lima League, Corsair Cup. Both. Keen, to me, is, has been the one to play standard more often. It's not like, again, Alive's doing it all the time, those proxies or anything like that. But I always remember Keen is just standard, but good. Well, we got the next game coming up. Uh, keep in mind, the winner of this will play against a laser in the semifinals. Bottom side of the bracket, Nurture is still going against Guru. Tails playing against Rainer. It would be really cool to have foreigner Korean finals on both sides of this. So, like, you know, one of these two, obviously. So, it's going to be Korean versus foreign in the top half. Then maybe Tails versus either Nurture or Guru down on the bottom side. Uh, either way, we're going to hop into Frozen Temple. Get into this. And some questions are probably going to be asked. I know people have been poking me and prodding me on the side. Like, whatever happened to the map intros? Where you bring the map intros back? I'm holding off, actually, until the next season to do it. It's just, the, the maps seem to come and go. I didn't like a lot of the maps that came this season, so I didn't know if it much, like, I had no idea if Dawson Station was going to stay with how much hate it got right away, or if it would be kicked out of the map pool. So, it'll be uh, certainly interesting to see what Season 3 maps look like, and that's when I plan to bring back map intros, guys. But, uh, at any rate, spawning here in the top left side of the map, he's blue once again, he's down one game in this best of three. Ladies and gentlemen, it is Keen. In the bottom right, as the Red Terran, he is alive. Uh, you had to Nos Neb 72 for the 17 month reset, by the way. Thank you for being classy and awesome. And then chat says Cheshire Cat was a sub, but it's not showing up in chat. So once again, it seems to be some discrepancy in like timing between the bot, between chat, and between the actual subscription happening. So I'm not sure if that's a new sub or a resub. Either way, shout out to so thank you. Uh, but anyway, so that last game was a pretty not weird start. Like, that was actually kind of a normal opener that led into the proxy Stargate. Or Starport, excuse me. Got Protoss on the brain, apparently. And that's not something easily scouted either, I think, is what makes that frustrating. Because because of how normal the opening looks. But uh, not usually a lot of scouting goes on. It's usually a little bit more dedication to damage. SCV is going to poke around this time and hopefully stick around long enough to get an idea for what the live's doing. Hmm... He does, I mean, he chose a smaller map, and I was thinking, like, he was kind of joking about him getting revenge for, for the last game, but really on Frozen Temple, if he was going to get revenge, it would have been with a proxy Reaper. And I guess the same thing for Alive. He was using the weird open a proxy Reaper. So this SV Scout really does see enough to feel comfortable for at least the next few minutes. Basically until they both get to the starport, because they're doing the exact, or close to, the same build. We already see a bit of a difference, though. Factory coming down sooner for Alive. This Keen goes for two re... Two? No. No, he goes for Marine. Oh, that's what's happening. Uh, Crimson Mix in chat's asking if his tip got lost. Sent another donation, apparently? Uh, mm. <coughs> I don't see it on Twitch alerts, man, but let me go check PayPal really quick. To be... Certain, because we certainly don't want you to be losing out on money, and if it didn't go through, then you should cancel any sort of payment like that. Yeah. Um, oh. Okay. Oh, this is cool. So hold up. Back, backing up for a second. First off, this has been sent okay. as a weird thing. We've had this happen before. It's getting classified as an e-check, which means this thing will be completed. It says e-check estimation date is September 20th, 2016. So what I'm going to do, Crimson Mix, I hope you're listening, is I'm going to cancel this payment and hopefully let you do that in whatever fashion is best for you. But the cool thing I was getting excited about is it actually shows by, it says paid by Twitch streaming and shows the username. Whereas in the past, it's always been anonymous. And we, I, had, <clears throat> I would have no idea who or what it is. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of cool. I guess that's with the whole new Twitch Twitch alerts becoming stream labs stream or whatever. Stream labs, yeah. Well, um, yeah, there was much else to talk about. This game is not nearly as decisive early on as last game was. Again, slight differences in the builds means that I think Alive... Oh, Alive goes for a faster third TC. Okay, so more than a slight difference. But the point is, they all get to 1-1-1. One, one, one. 
And then it's from there what you do with those structures that is important. And uh, alive. I'll say he's not doing very much. He got a Helena Reaper, which ended up defending its Keen's Reaper, but that's that's really that's all the units he has. He's got that defensive bunker because he certainly needs it. Whereas Keen is actually producing units from everywhere. He's gonna have a drop, potentially a Woodamine drop. Yeah, there you go. He starts his own third CC, not too far behind. He's got a Cyclone following this up, but Alive's already got the defensive Cyclone. And okay, there. I was waiting for what Alive's gonna get from the starport, and then I guess he started the, the Viking when I started looking over at Keen, but he's not gonna swap it over to Reactor. Yeah. Um, Alive certainly has enough defensive tools to not take any damage whatsoever from this drop. I mean, it, we always say that, then for whatever reason, you're not looking at the right place at the right time. And she just goes in through the front, but there's a bunker. You're not going to want to try and take that bunker with a medevac. I like the cyclone position on the left side. We got the Viking on the right side. And you're right, this isn't going to do anything at this point. It has a small chance of maybe wiggling in on that very, very south side down here. But uh, even then, it probably would have been picked up by the cyclone eventually. Mm -hmm. So, Alive does a good job deflecting this. However, when you got all things considered, worker counts are even. The small lead in that... Oop, bit of attack over here because the Reaper went in. Uh, goes to that third CC, finishing up pretty quick. Now, while both players are going to have a third CC, the question is really about who gets to actually take the third base. And they, might, they might both just float over here pretty easily, and this won't be too much trouble on either side. It is somewhat of a passive game, after all. But if, for example, this drop from Keen can poke and prod and keep that command center from landing safely, he'll eventually start getting a couple of SCVs ahead from it. In fact, sure. just burrowing the Widowmine at this location might not be too bad of an idea either. It's exactly <laughs> what he's going to do. Yeah. As you said, it's a pretty passive game. So even though Keen has, like, Medivac going for him, it's not it's going to do, like, a amount of damage. It is something, I think, nicer to have than Alive, who is just absolutely totally defensive. He's got a Viking off to the very right, which actually, I would say, doesn't need to be that far off away from his bases. Yeah, this actually yeah, asking to be pretty weird. Um, and then a couple of marines elsewhere, but he really it's it's keen that I think should feel a little more comfortable with the medevac flying around. Unfortunately, that still doesn't help him get a faster third CC on location, but it is really like the tiniest bit of differences. And, and keen even still has a bit of an SCV lead. It upgrades pretty perfectly even here and. Now what you say about their openers? It's just going to come down to who takes better engagements, and it's uh, kind of surprising, I guess. Excuse me, Keen chose this map because he was comfortable on it? As there really hasn't been anything too map dependent done by either one here. <laughs> Just playing that that macro game. Which you might see on like Frost sometimes, or you saw one in Gettysburg, but <clears throat> Frozen Temple. Usually too small to let things go by so easily. Well, that one marine in the middle of the map, thanks to that vision from the grass, ends up getting one marine, almost two. Baller. That's the train really shines through. Ah, uh, it's going to be sad when the tanks can no longer be picked up, of course, but right now they still can be, so floating those down the middle of the map. Mm-hmm. Uh, Keen, once again, being a little more of the uh, aggressive one, alive, just defending. Uh, no one's going to have any leads, really. I mean, I guess Keen's a little behind on his 1-1, but I don't think there's going to be a main engagement to really determine that. And in fact, he doesn't even bring any Marines to this, right? So there you go. The Viking tank combo is pretty annoying to deal with because Alive only went for three, not five. Uh, he'd rather be able to take care of this with his own Viking control, so he's getting two more, but... Oh, that should be a free Cyclone. Uh, it should be, but the Cyclone almost gets huh. a free Medivac, so a little bit wow. awkward. Uh, I could still get one of these Vikings, actually. The vision here should be long enough that... Ah, I got the front one. Let's see the back one with a little bit of damage would have gone down for sure. This might just barely get away. Yep. A little bit in that red now. Seriously, kill that Cyclone, though. <laughs> Come on. No? No? That's going to continue being a pain, because it, this could be a definite path of, like, one or two Medivacs. I guess the south side is already covered by a couple of Vikings, too, but... That could be a potential point of uh, dropping, or, or if it just stays here, I suppose it might get a free... Free Viking as it almost already did. Yeah, it's a bit odd because it's not quite a watchtower, but it is vision. You know, rest in Used peace to be. Watchtowers. Yeah, I love how they left rubble there, almost like a little bit of a <laughs> was here type thing. Yeah. It's not even very detailed rubble. You zoomed in on that? Like, I know, it's just the like, rocks that are near to it? These have more definition than these do. These look shiny. <laughs> One of those right, look well, like rocks from Reboot. Yeah, they look like rocks from StarCraft too. you know what I'm saying? <laughs> 
Ah. I guess it's like when you're watching TV animation, you can tell what part of the screen is going to be used, you know? Like when you're watching oh Scooby-Doo, and like the trap door is very obvious because it's a different color. Yeah, yeah. I, animation I, that, always, that always bugged me so much. Like there'd be a wall of rocks, and like one rock was like a different color than the rest. Yeah. Like, I wonder which is going to come loose and reveal the secret passage. Yep. <laughs> Anyway. I wonder how weird that would be, though. You got to consider somebody who maybe never watched cartoons growing up. They, they go back and watch those. Like, is that actually obvious to them? I'm wondering. Because we've just seen it so what many times. Like, that's obvious to us, right? Like, TV tropes in general, you've become accustomed to. But someone who's never seen one of those moments before, or a trope on TV. like So, like, they... you make a 13-year-old watch Scooby-Doo, and they don't notice the different panel? Or... Like, they... Oh, my God! How did they know it was there? Like, oh. whoa, it blows my mind! <laughs> I don't know about that. They probably think there's something wrong with the. They probably think like, oh, that animator made a bad mistake. When really, it was the only thing they could do. Like maybe. Uh, Shouts by the way to combination of Johas. He says Snoot's the champion, and that's certainly true. I love the sombrero, by the way. And then Flotch with a six-month resub. My passion for Zest is at an all-time low. Please hold me in prayer <laughs> for him to do well, Blizzcon. <laughs> Oh man, hopefully. He was so hyped, and I started actually watching Korean leagues. I know, Zagreb and I my simultaneously bad. got into watching Zest into the midst of his hype, and we're both like, oh, we tuned in for a loss, I guess. <laughs> yep, yep. Alright, so things started to get a little bit heated finally, and then didn't. Damn. <laughs> Let's go back to talking about Scooby Doo. Actually, uh, one thing I do want to talk about, it's a little off topic, the ASP emote is on its way back, guys. We spoke with several people at Twitch. Crazy. You, you all don't understand, like, it would take a long time for me to explain, so I'm not going to do it now, but TLDR, there's a lot of BS around why that emote got removed. There's a lot more BS about getting it back, but it is on the way, and it's just a matter of uh, them processing it. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so a big attack about the middle. King's got so many freaking siege tanks. Sitting on 12, just drops them on that front line, gets that first shot, not a problem. And unfortunately, Alive just doesn't have the numbers to engage into this. Not with his tanks, at least. Most of the army is across the map, and a lot of these Marines not really getting a lot done. If he can hold off and buy time and then have a couple of medevacs, maybe this goes better for him. But while he would huh. win any sort of Marine versus Marine fight, without medevacs, there's no sustainability, and these will eventually get cleaned up. Uh, alive, by the way, not quite getting the factory. Keen actually repairs that with an SCV on its dying breath, so it's got a little bit more health left in it. Other side of the map, though, I guess the Vikings did a good job of zoning out this medevac, so it's hard for Keen to push forward. I can barely hear you right now. Skype's doing that thing. Skype's doing that thing. Well, I'll tell you this much. If you can or can't hear me, Zombie Grub, this went really well for Alive. At uh... least on the home front. I was trying to pay attention to both the game and also deciphering what you were saying. It was very difficult to do. Uh, we can restart. The, do you want to reset the call now or wait till after? Is it still doing it? Restart it now. Okay. Bloop. One sec, guys. Uh, so yeah, we don't. I don't know. Skates do this more frequently, but for whatever reason, well, you guys won't understand what it sounds like unless it happens to one of us while we're broadcasting. The other person just goes. I did not fix it. it. Oh, well, I was making a sound. Like, is it okay now? Uh, it's doing it again. Okay, uh, let me just still look at the rest of this, and we'll fiddle with it All after, right I guess. <laughs> Anyways, the tanks start boosting forward, and there's not really a lot to do. I mean, maybe it picks off that factory, but it doesn't have the numbers to get on top of the real production, much less this right side. And well, King came in earlier with a lot of tanks, and he was doing a lot of damage. He's unfortunately lost most of those, and on that unit supply depth that I've had open for so long now, it's not a bad numbers game. Marine versus Marine, not too bad, but Alive's got the upgrades. There's an attack down here on the bottom side, but it's a planetary fortress, so that deals with it pretty quickly. Base of the natural gets completely picked off, and for Keen's sake, he's got to get those tanks in a position of fire. Marine's about to be on top of production. When you start losing your tech labs, when you start losing your factories, that's when this game starts going really, really badly. But looks like he does manage to hold on to the defense, but the problem now comes to that supply. And it's not even that Keen's not matching him supply. He's capping out best he can. He's dropping supply on his supply depots because he's still not able to get that 200-200 max out. Losing a command center took away a lot of his supply potential, but losing depots on top of that really, really hurt. Well, there's a push down the middle of the map, but that's a lot of Marines. So this is like a reverse mirrored situation of an attack we saw just moments ago. There are plenty of tanks in position. I can't see Keen getting all these tanks. He'll get most of them, but it'll cost him a lot of his Marines in the process. 
top side of the map. Right now, Alive's also deciding, does he go for that planetary? It's a huge base hit, and it's hard to actually knock it down. He's going to go for it. Tanks on the left side drop, but the Marines focus him still on top of it. No cannon fodder to protect the tanks. The planetary is almost going to go down. It falls to the fire of the tanks. Two pieces gone for Keen. Nothing really for Alive, as he does still hold on back at home. No real damage done. No production compromise. No bases sniped. Moving towards another base that was recently scanned by Keen, but Keen's not going to see that base go down, so even less information available to him. He's held up now what is one mining base. Nothing going on in the natural. He's rebuilding the command center. He's going to move his main over, but it's not going to matter. He doesn't have the money to build an army. He's sitting on 85 supply, and Alive looks like he is running away with this game. Lots of tanks still ready to drop. Marines coming that backside. A little bit awkward because he doesn't have a he doesn't have a lot of fodder. Upgrades have also finally equalized as well. Three three now on the ground when it comes to that bio, but still I don't think gonna be enough. GG. Alive! All right, Zombie Grub, can you hear me? Okay. Hi. At certain points, I didn't even know you were here talking. Yeah, so I, what we're going to do is uh, it's it's moving on to the semifinals. We're going to go to a commercial break. I'll restart the call. I'll try hosting. We'll see if it's any better. Maybe it will be. Maybe it won't be. Skype, am I right? Stajo! Hey, I've heard that guy is looking to charge people for their ad fevenu. Uh He was discussing it on my stream last night. Uh, I'm assuming you know what fevenu is, of course, right? Because um, it would be really embarrassing if you got this far into business and life and didn't know what Fevenu was. I'm not. I'm not sure what Fevenu is. Oh, don't admit that publicly. All right, guys. I got three codes left. Uh, we'll do. We'll do the stitches. We'll do chef stitches for the semifinals. So get your partoofs ready. We'll give that away so shortly. But uh, like I said, commercial break. We'll try and fix audio problems, and we'll see you guys soon. <laughs> 